So your name's not Nitro. No! <laughs> Mum didn't call me Nitro. I was a surfer, I still am a surfer, and I, t I, I met this girl, and she um, got asked to do this sort of audition. I was just there. What was really interesting was it came down to me and Lincoln Lewis for the, the gig of Nitro. All of a sudden I got this call two weeks later, going, G'day mate! I'm like, oh hey. He's like, oh it's Roy, the series producer. I'm like, oh what are you doing? He goes, yeah you got the job. I'm like, what, what do I do? He goes, you know like, surf, soccer, skydive, bungee jump, um, drive cars. I'm like, what, what are you, are you gonna pay me to do that? Never at all. Um, I think what's funny when it comes to like uh, the TV world, especially in the kids sort of genre, was they kind of like people that don't know because you haven't been to acting school and walk in and go, and scene, I'm acting now. Like you're just who you are and they'll pick a personality that fits the type. Awful. I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was awful. I was so nervous. When I say awful, it's actually a really good memory. My first ever shoot was a skateboarding story. And then we went to um, the Queensland Fire and Rescue Service. So it was like how to become a firefighter. And they, it was a 36 degree day and we were in a full turnout suit. So the whole kit and caboodle for, um, you know, if you were to go in and actually save people in a fire situation. I had to say, hey, if you're a boy or a girl and you want to become a firefighter, well come with me as I spend a day with the Queensland Fire and Rescue Services. Remember it to this day, right? First ever shoot. 46 times it took me to say that. But it was so funny because everyone was so hot and so sweaty and it was my first day and I was like, oh no, this is it, I'm done. Uh, you know what's really interesting is we're so, so different. And a lot of people don't realize this, like outside the show, we never hung out. Getting to know him was fine. Like we really all got along quite well and we did, you know, um, we all gelled, you know, amazingly well. But we used to get that all the time. Like, hey, what's Curio doing? And what's, you know, like all the time, all the kids were super invested. Which was cool, it was humbling. And they would be kind of, I stopped saying it because people would start getting devastated when they realized we didn't hang out. So I was just like, well, cut that one. So I remember going to Fiji and I get this, hey, Bula Nitro, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so your name's not Nitro. No! <laughs> Mum didn't call me Nitro. But some places like Revolver, that's down in Melbourne, which is known as like a dirty nightclub and places like that, they'll be like, oh, Nitro, it's crazy. But then also, um festivals to get from here to like the starts near the stage would usually take i'd literally take nearly 150 200 photos every time but it didn't bother me because it was all you know, like you crew that kept me in a job the shack was sort of one of a, uh, one of a kind of a show and we got it described to us they said we've given you character names so people automatically a kid can automatically connect with one of you it's like when you get a big mac you know what you're gonna get when you get a chicken burger you know what you're gonna get and they just wanted that so when Nitro comes on the show, you know it's going to be sports challenge. He's going to do like a dare Nitro. He's going to be like, whatever. When Curio comes, you know it's going to be a science. So it was kind of catering to every kid. I think that kind of element of the show, and Teague McGrath was the guy that originally helped put that show together, was quite iconic. Like, you know, there was nothing really like that. Yes, it was a five to 15 year old show, although we targeted 15 to sort of 18, because you target that age group, the young crew watch anyway. But our biggest audience was 16 to 39. That was our biggest audience watching. Because even though it was a kid's show, we were doing things that you would kind of want to know anyway. So like there were, there, it was a kid's show, but there was an older, older audience watching. So one kid wrote him goes, you know, I've, my dream car is a Lamborghini Gallardo Nera. And they're like, hey, do you want to drive a $450,000 car today? I'm like, yeah. I remember driving to that shoot even just going, you know, this is ridiculous. Even if I had the money, like there's no way I'd spend this much on a car. I got in it, drove it, and I went, if I was rich, this is the first thing I'd buy. <laughs> the number one question was this, uh, who does Nitro's hair? Was the number one question we'd always get. This is my natural hair, this is how it grows. Um, shave it, this is how it grows. I don't touch it, I don't twist it, I don't do, do a thing. My birth mom's a red-headed Irish lady, my birth dad's Nigerian as black as the ace of spades, so I'm kind of the paddle popping <laughs> line in the middle. So I've just, so I actually haven't, here's a fun fact, I haven't cut my hair since the show. And when my hair was this long, the, the, the boss was like, oh, who does your hair? We have to keep it up, like, because continuity is important. And I go, oh, it grows like that. No one believed me until like a couple of years in, they're like, I can't believe your hair grows like that. I'm like, yeah, right? Second thing was, why does Nitro wear sp so much spray tan? <laughs> I'm like, I'm half African. Imagine that! A lot of people asking as well, you know, 
does Curio really like science? Like asking if we really like the things, mine was easy because I've always loved sports and I, I got to pretty much just be myself, just embellished really. Honestly, it was easy because it was, we were ready to go our separate ways. We got, we did so much more than we thought we were ever gonna do. It was kind of, to be honest, I was living in Brisbane, the show ended, I packed my car the next day and I drove to Sydney, I haven't been back. There was a, probably a year before it ended that it needed to end, and so it was kind of almost like a, we'd, we were kind of pretty ready to all go and just do our own thing. So I work in the hair industry now, and I know it's bizarre that you've got a guy with dreadies that sells hair care, but I, I don't know, the world's a funny way. So my job is basically traveling around the country, talking to people and then growing like different salons through their sales um, channels. So there's that. And then my wife and I started this flower business and just it just took off. So it's been a weird thing from going from surfing to TV to selling shampoo and flowers. Like my, my life's just kind of gone a weird sort of, yeah. We always get this, people say, bring back the shack. That format works really well. The format's like phenomenal. Looking at it going, if I was to go back and do anything TV, I would go and do that same format, keep it a bit older, and do just things that people want to know. I'd definitely be down for that. So if you guys are out there watching, you want to hang out, let's do it, all right?